Countless books, documentaries, television series, and Hollywood movies have been produced about the history of the West, or the Wild West as it is often referred to. They are often highlighted by biographies and exploits of such individuals as Frank and Jesse James and the Younger Brothers, Billy the Kid, Wild Bill Hitchcock, and Calamity Jane. The history of the West is a history of multi-ethnic relations and conflict. The lives of indigenous people, such as Geronimo and Sitting Bull, are usually portrayed as either noble savages or barbaric heathens. For the most part, they are depicted as a hindrance to civilization and progress. Anti-Chinese violence and racism was rampant in the Wild West. Black cowboys also played a prominent role in the history of the West and its development. An ethnic group that is either ignored or stereotyped is Chicanos. Theirs is a history that has been lost. This documentary will focus on the life of the 19th century California outlaw, Divorcio Vasquez. Through his life, we can begin to understand the Mexican experience in the United States after the American takeover of the Southwest in 1848. Many other Mexicans had conflicts with the Anglo-American legal and political system and became folk heroes to many Mexicans. Juan Cheno Cortina was such an individual. His conflict with the law began in Brownsville, Texas in 1859 when he stopped a white sheriff from beating a Mexican in the head with the butt of his pistol. An argument ensued and Cortina shot the sheriff. This incident sparked a full-fledged two-year Mexican rebellion that was not quelled until federal troops were deployed to the area. In the 1880s, a secretive Mexican organization known as the Gordas Blancas, the White Hats, fought against the encroachment by speculators, homesteaders, railroads, and government of their communal lands and way of life. Their tactics included tearing up railroad tracks, cutting down fences, and burning crops. One of the most famous and well-known Mexican outlaws of the Old West was Joaquin Murrieta of California. It is difficult to ascertain his true identity because of the many inaccuracies in books and articles written about him, that he has become an almost mythical figure. According to Chicano scholars, this is an authentic photograph of him. These are artistic and creative images of Joaquin. Supposedly, the California Rangers killed him in 1853. They decapitated him and placed his head and the hand of his cohort, Three Finger Jack, in a jar. The head and hand became an instant commercial and touring curiosity where the public paid money to view them. The Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo of 1848 ended the war between the United States and Mexico. It provided for California, New Mexico, Arizona, and parts of Utah and Colorado to become states. Mexicans who remained became U.S. citizens and they retained all their rights of property legal under Mexican law. Tiburcio Vasquez was born in 1835 in Monterrey, California. His grandfather was the mayor of San Jose in the early 1800s. The thing that most people don't understand about Tiburcio Vasquez is that he was not at all a bandido. He was an outlaw, he was outside the law, but everything that he did was honorable, unlike bandidos who often are given to their own wiles. He was not a mean man, he was not malicious, he, he certainly didn't kill people, he wasn't mean to children, he didn't kick dogs that we know of. I don't want to romanticize him. This is, I mentioned, when he se metió, you know, with, with, with la esposa de otro, I mean, that was wrong. You know, I, I don't think necessarily that he was. I mean, it's impossible to tell because all these layers have been put over him. Yeah. But I think that he um, did some things that sort of, you know, was because of his situation. I don't think he said, I'm taking this cause on for my people. There was no justice. And uh, so consequently, you know, it was one that, uh, uh, that here in Los Angeles, although there was a, a um, overwhelming Mexican majority, uh, the sheriffs were almost always white. You had a uh, sheriff that was Mexican, that dealt just with Mexico, but he had no authority over white people. There's a lot of people 
scholarships, you know, not enough people focus on Hikano Jordan, but there's a lot that, you know, extra legal, um, the extra, extra legal recourse that uh, Anglo's resort doing one was lynching, you know, taking people out of the jails before they were even tried and, and um, hung. At the time that the Bucio Vasquez was coming, you had greaser laws. You had vagrancy laws where they could put you into jail and you would, they would farm you out uh, to places that needed labor, convict labor. Vagrancy laws, Mexicanos were picked up and thrown in jail, uh, oftentimes uh, uh, at some of their fiestas, some of their parties, when the police would just come and, and, and pick up Mexicanos, or Mexicanos who enjoyed spending Sunday at the local plaza were also picked up by, by the Anglo-American sheriff, the chief of police, and they were harassed uh, uh, in, their, uh, in their communities, in their neighborhoods. A spirit of hatred and revenge took possession of me. I had numerous fights in defense of what I believed to be my rights and those of my countrymen. I believed that we were being unjustly deprived of the social rights that belonged to us. I got my mother's blessing and told her I was going out into the world. It's a book uh, that was written by the British historian Eric Hobsbawm, Marxist historian, who talked about primitive rebels or social banditry, uh, in that these were people who came from, from a community. Uh, these were primarily individuals who uh, had difficulties with law enforcement, either the courts or the... Uh, uh, the, the police, um, and they became, quote, outlaws, uh, bandits. You oftentimes would rob, quote, from the rich and give to the poor, the kind of the Robin Hood uh, 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 image of, of, these, uh, of these rebels. Um, and they protected the community, and the community protected them, and they, were, they became like heroes. I was wounded 11 times. I received eight wounds when I was captured. I was shot in the hand when I escaped from San Quintin, in the neck by Salazar at San Juan, and in the breast by the constable of Santa Cruz. He saw himself, I believe, as a young Simon Bolivar, and I, I, I think he saw himself as a Don Quixote as well. Perhaps not as futile as Don Quixote was tilling at windmills, but rather, but rather, a Simon Bolivar who could save a nation. White men he wrong on me in Monterey County. Given $60,000, I would be able to recruit enough farms and men to revolutionize Southern California. But he was an idealist who, like Socrates, would rather die than give up his rights. They sold tickets to his hanging. They assigned seats in, the, in, a, in an auditorium style where, where they built up this grandstand all around St. James Park. They actually sold seats to watch the spectacle. I mean, that's all it became. It became a circus. It was a spectacle. Standing on the gallows, the Wurzio turned his head to eight Sheriff Adams in adjusting the noose. He uttered one word, pronto. Ibulcio Vasquez was dead. Well, why do we still know about him today? He became a really important folk hero for people. So, and I think that was more, maybe the, even though I'm a historian, I think like um, when we talk about stories of the past, memories, so much of the, the nitty gritty facts aren't as important as how people remember him. You know, so how people remember him and the power behind, behind his story and his legend, I think is more important sometimes. Carmelita, cobardes, la asesinaron. 